Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today marks the end of the Easter season with this fantastic, powerful miracle of Pentecost and Jesus sending the Holy Spirit on his disciples just as he had promised. Justin did an amazing job with the Acts 2 reading as he portrayed Peter. Peter preaching that Pentecost sermon. And Martha did a wonderful job in stepping us through some of the signs and wonders that were connected with Jesus' disciples and the many others who were gathered there in that place on that first Pentecost. Now, I don't know that we can ever recreate the power and the wonder of that first Pentecost and all that went on there from that powerful, even violent wind that blew in to what appeared to be tongues of flame that were on the disciples' heads. And then those disciples being able to speak in languages they'd never spoken before. And they did it in order to speak of Jesus. To tell people about Jesus' crucifixion, His resurrection, all that He had done to people who had gathered that day from all around the world. And to Peter's sermon. And what a sermon it was. When all was said and done, 3,000 people were baptized. And through the working of that very Holy Spirit that had blown in, they came to believe in Jesus as Lord and as Savior. What we need to remember is it's that same Spirit who is still at work in hearts and lives moving powerfully in our world today. I'd like to share with you uh, a couple of things to begin with. Matters regarding the Holy Spirit and connected to Pentecost that can at times be a little confusing. First of all, this isn't the first time the Holy Spirit shows up. The Holy Spirit has always been around. We're going to hear that even next week when we're talking about the creation. And the Holy Spirit was there. Genesis 1 and 2, very much having His hand in the work of creation. We hear references of the Holy Spirit throughout the Old Testament. And then from Jesus, oh, He spoke so much of the Holy Spirit from the beginning of His ministry to His last days in the upper room, last hours before His crucifixion, and then even after His resurrection from the dead. And it wasn't always just about the promise of the Holy Spirit coming. No, do you remember an early conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, speaking of the Spirit and baptism, being born again, having to enter into the kingdom of heaven through water and the Spirit. And then, right before Jesus would go to the cross, He spoke of the Holy Spirit, reminding them to wait. After He rose from the dead, He appeared to them that first Easter evening. And do you remember what He did? He breathed on them. And He said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And these were outside of the Pentecost event. Now, Jesus' point that He was making when He said right before he ascended into heaven. Stay put. Don't do anything. His point in saying that before this dramatic outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost was to give them 
in no uncertain terms the reminder that they could not do anything without Him, without the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives, guiding them, leading them, directing them. You see, it's a work of the Holy Spirit to remind them of all that Jesus had promised them. The Holy Spirit was to bring to mind all that Jesus had said throughout his three years of ministry, walking with his disciples, connecting the dots for them so they could understand not only what Jesus said, but also what he did and all that that meant. It's the Holy Spirit who convicts of sin. The Holy Spirit who reminds us of our need for Jesus. The Holy Spirit who is continually pointing us to the one who forgives. To the one who saves. And the one who creates the very faith in our hearts so that we can even believe in Jesus in the first place. And then it's that Holy Spirit that promises to dwell in our hearts. It's that Holy Spirit who opens up for us God's Word so we can understand it, so we can hear it. The one who brings us comfort and counsel, wisdom, and guidance, and all things that we need. Now what Justin did in that Acts 2 reading is he shared with us the first third of Peter's Pentecost sermon. He quoted from the Old Testament prophet Joel. He reminded us of that basic truth, that Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then, and then, Peter stuck it to them. And not only to them, but he stuck it to us, too. In the rest of Peter's sermon, he went on to expound how we, are guilty. How we had our hand in on putting Jesus to death. Just as Peter was preaching to those who had gathered there on that Pentecost, they weren't there two months earlier. And neither were we. But our part was significant. Our guilt was real. Because why was it that Jesus went to the cross? It was because of our sin that He went to lay down His life to forgive us, to cleanse us, to make us holy once again before God. Now, it's also why Peter, in his sermon, wove all the way through God's love. The promises that God made of what He did in spite of my sin. Listen to some of what Peter laid out that God chose to do in spite of us. God raised him from the dead. It was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave. King David spoke of the resurrection of the Christ. God has raised this Jesus to life. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and poured out what you now see and hear. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord 
and Christ. And Peter ended his sermon by responding to the people's questions. Those who had gathered there, they heard Peter, and they heard him loud and clear, and were told they were cut to the heart by what Peter said. They were convicted of their guilt, of their part in Jesus' crucifixion. And they said, what do we do? Where do we turn? Peter pointed them back. Back to baptism. Back to repentance. And what did he say happens when we're baptized? Now now catch this. Our baptism, it's a mini Pentecost. Listen to this. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children. Because Christ is risen, we have hope. And we have hope because of what we have received in our baptism, in our faith, through the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. You see, we must not forget that the Holy Spirit continues to do His work among us and in us and here in our world today. With all of this craziness that's going on all around us, craziness that just continues to go on and on, it's the Holy Spirit who continues to remind us that the Lord is in control, reminding us to trust in Him, to not be discouraged, to not be angry, but to have courage, to be bold, to be at peace, and to trust that He knows what's going on. He invites us to be His faith-filled, Spirit-filled people of God. If you've been baptized, you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever forget it. And don't let ever, don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Because that Spirit is the power in your life. It is that Spirit who is reminding you that you are not alone. Not now, not ever. It is that Spirit that is reminding you that you are loved. Loved with an everlasting love. Loved by the One who has come to bring you exactly what you need. To bring you forgiveness. To bring you encouragement. To bring you help and hope and life. What we do in this life. It's not by our power or strength. It's not by our winsomeness or smarts. It's not by our discipline or hard work. We are powered by the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus told His disciples to sit tight and not to do anything until He sent His Holy Spirit on them. It's the same for us. Except we're not being told to sit tight and wait through our baptism. We've been given the Holy Spirit. We've been sent out now with boldness, with courage, with faith to speak of Jesus, 
and the life that He has come to bring. And it is that Holy Spirit in our hearts that empowers us, that emboldens us, that gives us the words we need to speak in the moments that we need to speak them. And not all that dissimilar from that first Pentecost when the disciples spoke and were gifted to speak in a variety of different languages. While we may not have that particular gift, we have been given the privilege of speaking words. Words to the people in our lives. Words of Jesus. Words of His love. And especially in times like this, where I'm guessing you know of people in your life that you interact with, family members, friends, neighbors, co-workers, people on Facebook and, and other social media who are, are still panicked, who are kind of over the top and don't know what to do with all of this. We have the opportunity, guided by the Holy Spirit, with gentleness and respect, with love and with truth, to speak our Lord's words into these times, into this season of life, to speak of Jesus not only of His love, but also His, His presence, His promises, and all that He continues to hold out for us that truly does provide comfort and peace and hope for now and forever. The what now that I have for you today, there are a couple things I would invite you to think about. Take time to remember your baptism this week, your mini Pentecost event. Pull up pictures and video and give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. And if you haven't been baptized and would like to be, Get in touch with me. I'd love to talk with you more about it. Secondly, be aware of and pray for the Holy Spirit's leading this week with decisions and actions in your life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.